الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم اللهم انفعنا بما علمتنا وعلمنا ما ينفعنا وزدنا علما نافعا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ويعذب المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات والمشركات الظنين بالله ظن السوء عليهم دائرة السوء وغضب الله عليهم ولعنهم وأعد لهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا ولله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عزيزا حكيما إنا أرسلناك شاهدا ومبشرا ونذيرا لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتعزروه وتوقروه وتسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا إن الذين يبايعونك إنما يبايعون الله يد الله فوق أيديهم فمن نكث فإنما ينكث على نفسه ومن أوفى بما عاهد عليه الله فسيؤتيه, فسيؤتيه أجرا عظيما Continuing with the verses of Surah Al-Fatih, we mention how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first five verses um, addressed, comforted, congratulated the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam after Sulh al-Hudaybiyah on the way back to Medina. Allah rewarded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with three special gifts in the first three verses. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addressed the believers to comfort them, to calm them, to reassure them that whatever happened was in their best interest. Whatever happened in Sulh al was from Allah. Allah is guiding everything through His wisdom, through His knowledge. Even though the Muslims, the Sahaba may be thinking that what happened was a type of defeat for them. It was giving in to the conditions of the disbelievers, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding them, this is from Allah. All of this is going to lead to a great victory of Makkah within two years. So this is pretty much the introduction to now the, the victory of Islam over the people of Makkah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reassured them that whatever happened, Allah had revealed sakina in your hearts. Whatever you did was through the guidance of Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the disbelievers. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ السَّكِينَةَ فِي قُلُوبِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Plate number Khwaja 2, K-H-A-W-A-J-A 2. Please move your car, please. Uh, you blocking, we, are, we have to make a tent outside and you blocking the way. So please move your car, Khwaja 2. That Allah is the one who put sakina, tranquility in the hearts of the believers. In contrast, Allah subhanahu, we would assume that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also intends to say that He is the one who did not put sakina in the hearts of the disbelievers. And because Allah did not put sakina, this divine calmness, this divine, because Allah put awe in the hearts of the disbelievers, He put fear. This is why the disbelievers of Makkah did not have the courage to come out and fight the Muslims. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put fear in their hearts and eventually, even though they were so emotional and enthusiastic 
In the beginning, when the Sahaba came with the Prophet وسلم, they said, we will never allow the Muslims to come into Mecca and we will you know, fight them until you know, they are defeated. But eventually, when um, por- portions of the, dis- the, the, the army of the Meccans, they deserted the army, like we mentioned before, the people of Ta'if left, the people of the tribes left, left Eventually they lost their courage and Allah put fear in their hearts and they accepted um, to make a truce with the believers that we will not be at war anymore for the next 10 years. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, in other words is trying to say Allah guided the hearts of the believers and he is the one who cast fear and awe in the hearts of the, these believers. He did not put tranquility and courage in their hearts. And as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put such fear in the hearts of the believers and deprive them of this special mercy? وَيُعَذِّبَ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ So that, and so that Allah can punish the, the hypocrites, the male hypocrites and the female hypocrites. مُنَافِقِينَ وَالْمُنَافِقَاتِ وَالْمُشْرِكِينَ وَالْمُشْرِكَانَ And so that he can punish the male idol worshippers, disbelievers, and the female idol worshippers, disbelievers. Munafiqeen may be referring to the tribes in Medina or outside of Medina who refuse to join the Prophet ﷺ on this journey. The Prophet ﷺ, we're right in the beginning we mentioned that when he was about to leave because he was assuming that there might be some obstacle, some, um, um, some confrontation with the disbelievers of Mecca. He wanted to gather as many people as possible. So he sent messages to the surrounding tribes who had accepted Islam or who said they were Muslims within Medina also that join us and come with us. These tribes outside of Medina, they refused. They did not participate and they refused to come. And they said amongst themselves, because their faith was not pure, it was not sincere. Thus Allah is addressing them as munafiqeen. These tribes, they wished, they, they said amongst themselves and they were wishing that the Muslims, when they go to Mecca, because they're very few and the Meccans are, you know, they have a whole army ready, the Muslims are going to be killed. They're going to be finished off. So we hope that when they get to Mecca, they never return again. So these people are going to their death. So we will not join them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses these hypocrites by saying that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala caused all of this so that their hypocrisy could eventually be punished. And so that he may punish the hypocrites, male and female, and the disbelievers, obviously the disbelievers of Mecca, who became the obstacle for the Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims to enter Mecca. Eventually, either they would have been punished by being defeated in war, or eventually, many of them accepted Islam. And as for the munafiqeen, um, they lived throughout their lives not being satisfied with what was going on with Islam and Muslims because the hypocrites in their hearts they had this deep desire that the Muslims should be finished off the Muslims should be defeated the Muslims should um, you know their name should be um, erased from the face of this earth but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the opposite he caused to happen the Muslims only grew they only spread and Islam and the honor of Islam and the the um, the prestige of Islam only increased as the days went along. So this caused great um, you know, discomfort, uneasiness in the hearts of the munafiqeen. They couldn't take this, right? And you know, we, we have people like that in the world still, right? Who wish for the Islam and Muslims to be like persecuted, to be tortured, to be killed and to be finished. But when they see that Islam is only increasing, People are only increase, uh, accepting Islam. Uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only helping the Muslims. This causes great um, uh, grief in their hearts, great hurt. They are hurt when they see Islam and Muslims um, living with, with dignity, with honor, 
practicing their religion. They can't see it. It's, it's too much for them. They can't bear it. Thus Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, all of this was caused to happen so that He may punish the munafiqeen and munafiqat. The, the male hypocrites and the female hypocrites. The females, although they did not actively participate in preventing the Prophet ﷺ or um, wishing ill for them, but because they were also with the males, meaning they were complacent in what the males were doing. They were pleased with it. They were content with it. The women were content with what the men were doing from the disbelievers. And thus, Allah includes the women also because... Um, through their desire and through their happiness over what was happening, they are also included with those who are actively becoming obstacles for Islam and Muslims. And then Allah says, "Wal mushrikina wal mushrikat." And who were they? Adhanina billahi dhanasaw. Those who had ill assumptions, those who had ill thoughts of Allah. Adhanina billahi, those who would think about Allah, dhannasaw in a bad way, or would have ill assumptions, like bad assumptions of Allah, right? Allah and His Rasul, that they would be doubting Allah, that Allah is not going to help the Muslims, uh, Allah um, is not able to give victory to the Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can, uh, will not protect the Muslims from the Meccans. They would uh, sow these doubts in the minds of believers or try to, these hypocrites. Thus, meaning they had doubts in Allah. They didn't have conviction. When Allah and His Rasul would say that we must travel to, to Mecca, we must take on this journey, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be with us, they had doubts. How can Allah be with us against such an enemy who has so much strength and we are so weak? And thus they fell into doubt. And there are many situations where Allah brought upon the Muslims that only the true believers preserve their faith in Allah. And as for the hypocrites, on many occasions, they, they express their doubts about Allah. This is a sign of hypocrisy. When a person has doubts in Allah, that would Allah do this? Will Allah give victory to the Muslims? How can He give victory? Look at the Muslims. Look at how weak they are. Look at how feeble they are. Look at how financially um, they are inferior and others are superior to the Muslim. Like, how will it happen? Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa have said that Islam and Muslims will be victorious, Islam will th spread throughout the world, but people have doubts. Even those who say la ilaha illallah, they have doubts in Allah. What will Allah do in the hereafter? What will happen to us? If we worship Allah, if we obey Allah, will Allah fulfill His promises? People are like on the edge, right? And um, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises that He will test people regarding. How, how sincere and how firm are they in their belief of Allah's promises? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that the person who will obey Allah and His Rasul who will help the deen of Allah, Allah will help them. Right? How far are they ready to go to acquire this promise of Allah? Or do they have doubts that if, if I dedicate myself to the deen, if I um, um, take out my time for the deen of Allah, then I will lose out somewhere else. And thus they have doubts in the promises of Allah and His Rasul. May Allah protect us and not make us from those who have ill thoughts of Allah, right? Who are not convinced, who are not confirm in their faith with Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, these people, the munafiqeen and the mushrikeen, were those who had ill thoughts of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, they will soon face days of hardship, difficulty. Like upon them, are afflictions that will come again and again because of their disbelief, because of their uh, lack of conviction and trust in Allah. They will face afflictions again and again. These afflictions are coming upon them. Alayhim da'ira meaning something is usually referring to an affliction that uh, occurs, a calamity that comes upon a person, a curse that is upon a person, like an evil calamity or 
a, uh, uh, a hardship uh, will come upon them or will continue to uh, confront them. وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ This is what in this world, عَلَيْهِمْ دَائِرَةُ السَّوْءِ In this life, they will face many obstacles and calamities and afflictions. And in the next life, وَغَضِبَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah will be extremely angry with them. وَلَعَنَهُمْ And He will curse them, meaning He will deprive them of His mercy. وَأَعَدَّ لَهُمْ جَهَنَّمْ And He has prepared for them the hellfire. وَسَاءَتْ مَسِيرًا And how evil, how awful is it as a place to stay. Masira, How awful is it as a place to go to. Masir means a place a person returns to. That is a place that people will return to in the hereafter. How awful is it a destination. وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And to Allah belongs the armies of the heavens and the earth. Allah repeats this verse. He mentioned this verse after, um, after comforting the believers and after mentioning that the reward that the believers will get. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, after saying anzala sakinat ala qulubil mu'minin allah said there also in the fourth verse walillahi junudu samawati wal ard that to allah belongs the armies of the heavens and the earth there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned it for the believers to reassure them that allah has the armies allah to allah belongs the armies of the heavens and the earth you don't have to worry right when allah tells you to fight allah will be with you and when allah tells you not to fight and uh, sign a peace treaty Allah also owns the heavens and the earth and the armies that if he wants he can finish them without you going to war with them and he could defeat them here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeats the verse now for the disbelievers وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Allah is reminding the disbelievers to Allah belongs the armies of the heavens and the earth no matter how much you try to stop Islam and the Muslims Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's armies will always um, overcome the disbelievers and Allah's armies are unknown only Allah knows what he uses against his the disbelievers and those who try to stop the the light of Islam from spreading thus they should remember walillahi junudu samawati wal ab that even in peace Allah is capable with his armies of defeating the disbelievers no matter how how much strength they may have. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَزِيزًا And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all-powerful. He can destroy the disbelievers without the need of using the Muslims. He could send armies, unseen armies, like we are seeing now. Unseen armies of Allah that are um, being the cause of people um, you know, being removed from the face of the earth unseen armies of Allah natural disasters calamities these are the armies of Allah when Allah wants he um, sends them to to whomever he wants whomever he wants to afflict with these afflictions that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's all powerful but he's also wise hakiman he's also wise he doesn't send them based on human emotions right that humans want that's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his decisions with pure wisdom. So when he wants, he will send his armies. And when he doesn't want, when his wisdom dictates that they should not be afflicted, they are not afflicted. They are left to be the way they are. When he wants, he will punish the oppressors. And through his wisdom, when he decides, and if he decides through his wisdom that he will allow the oppressors to um, oppress people in their persecution this is also through the wisdom of Allah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then after um, addressing the disbelievers who, the, and the way they behaved at Sulh al Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds the believers of the rights of Allah and His Rasul because these blessings that the believers received were through the, the grace of Allah the mercy of Allah and through the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa through his blessings Thus Allah reminds the believers who the Messenger of Allah is. And Allah says, Inna arsalnaka shahidan. Surely we have sent you, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, as a witness, shahidan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be a witness to the actions of his Ummah on the Day of Judgment. 
who believed and who disbelieved. Some scholars said that he will be a witness for those people who were living in his time. That he will testify that yes, these people believed and these people rejected me. Other scholars say no, it's general. He will, be, he will testify for, uh, uh, for human beings till the day of judgment because the a'mal of this ummah are presented to the Prophet ﷺ every Mondays and Thursdays. Right? The a'mal of this ummah, the actions of this ummah are presented to the Prophet ﷺ. So he is aware of who is believing and who is not, who is obeying and who is disobeying. Right? Uh, Sayyid ibn al-Musayyib and others, the tabi'un, they mentioned that uh, thus Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will have the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam testify even for those people who were after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will be able to testify. As a witness, Allah says, we have sent you as a witness. وَمُبَشِّرًا and a giver of glad tidings, good news to the believers. How much Allah, the Prophet has, like, um, how much reward, how much um, encouragement, how much hope the Prophet has given the believers that be patient. You will receive this, you will receive this, you will receive this in this life, in the grave, in the next life, until Jannah. Right. How many promises that have Allah and His Rasul have given us? It is up to us of how much we believe those promises. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Messenger وسلم, to the believers to give them glad tidings that this is what you are going to get when you stay on Iman, when you die on Iman. Allah promises you this, Allah will give you this. Allah, how much Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, He is going to give the believers. All that was conveyed to us through the Prophet وَنَذِيرًا And a warner for the disbelievers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the Messenger وسلم, like He sent all messengers to warn the disbelievers so that they have no excuse that you were not warned. You weren't told what will happen if you disbelieve in Allah, if you reject Allah, if you disobey Allah. Everyone has been warned, right? So a warner for the disbelievers what will be the consequence of their disbelief? So that on the Day of Judgment, they cannot say, we did not know. No one warned us. Allah sent the Messenger وسلم, as a warner. Then Allah says, لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So that you may believe. What should be the result of this? When you understand who the Prophet وسلم, is, he is a, a witness upon you. He is a giver of good, glad tidings for you. So that you may believe in Allah. لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ Maintain your faith in Allah. وَرَسُولِهِ And His Messenger. وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ And you support Him. The pronoun here, Him, most of the commentators mention because there are three pronouns coming up. وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ means And you support Him. وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ And you honor Him. وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا And you him His and you glorify him. You him his praise or you glorify him. And you glorify him bukratan wa asila, morning and evening. And you glorify him morning and evening throughout the day. The, the last, there are three um, re recommendations or instructions that are given to the believers. After believing in Allah, Allah and His Rasul, Allah is instructing us that your belief in Allah and your, and your Rasul should translate to what? Assisting Him, honoring Him, and glorifying Him. The third instruction of glorifying Him, the commentators agree this is referring to Allah because glorification is only of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We do tasbih of Allah. We say subhanallah. This is glorification of Allah. So because the third pronoun, him refers to Allah bil ittifaq. This is why most commentators say the first two instructions are also referring to Allah. So that you may support Allah. Support Allah meaning support the deen of Allah. Wa tu'azziru. Help the deen of Allah. Part of our belief in Allah and His Rasul is that we help the deen of Allah. We be helpers of the deen of Allah. How do we help the deen of Allah? We spread the deen of Allah. We practice the deen of Allah. We learn the deen of Allah. This is helping the deen of Allah. Whatever we do for the deen of Allah is assisting the deen of Allah. When we come to the masjid, we should also have this intention. I'm coming to the masjid because I'm helping the deen of Allah. 
Coming to the masjid is helping the deen of Allah. Offering the salat is helping the deen of Allah. Reciting the Quran, speaking to someone, giving charity is helping the deen of Allah. Helping, assisting the poor is helping the deen of Allah. Because we do it because Allah has instructed. Thus when a believer helps those who are in need, they are helping the deen of Allah. Because they're doing it sincerely for Allah. So that Allah could be pleased. So that people could realize that Allah has taught us to help others. To help the poor, to help the needy, to help those who uh, are being afflicted in calamities. So all of the actions that have been uh, taught to us in regards to the rights of Allah, the rights of other human beings. When we fulfill those for the sake of Allah, we are assisting the deen of Allah. Thus every practice, every act of obedience becomes an assistance for the deen of Allah. If we are be being steadfast at a time when people are leaving the deen of Allah, people are leaving the masjid, people are leaving the recitation of the Qur'an. At that time, if we will remain firm and practice the deen of Allah, this is also helping the deen of Allah. We are not abandoning Allah and His Rasul. We are staying firm on His teachings. When everyone is walking away, we will remain firm. We should make this intention that I will, uh, I intend to remain firm on the deen of Allah even if the whole world leaves the deen of Allah. Even if the whole world will turn away from Allah and His Rasul, I will not do that. I will stand firm till my last breath. Allah give us the tawfiq. We should make this intention. That is helping the deen of Allah. Wa azziru and help him, meaning Allah the deen of Allah. Wa tuwakkiruhu and honor the deen of Allah. Right? Become a source of honor for the deen of Allah. Respect the deen of Allah and do not degrade it. Do not uh, trivialize it. Consider it to be insignificant. The deen of Allah is the most important thing in this world. This world exists because of the deen of Allah. If Allah's deen did not exist, no, nothing would exist. This is the soul of this world, the deen of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is keeping this world running because of his deen. As long as his deen is alive, someone is saying Allah, Allah will keep this world running. When there's no more deen of Allah on this, the face of this earth, Allah will wrap it up. There's no need for this. Thus, it's like when the deen of Allah leave this world, leaves this world, it's like the soul has left the body. Allah will destroy the world. Right? So we could just imagine from this how important is the deen of Allah. It's more important than us. Like we are not important. It is the deen of Allah that is important. Right? It's more important than anything we have. Anything we may strive for. The most important thing is the deen of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was, was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was willing to see his most beloved Prophet and all the other prophets suffer for the deen of Allah. Just imagine how important the deen of Allah is in the eyes of Allah. Even the most beloved to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, um, had them suffer in the way of the deen of Allah. Right? They, they struggled and suffered. They, they went through so much difficulty. All for what? To establish the deen of Allah. Thus through this we can imagine how important the deen of Allah is. It should be the paramount, right? That should be our first priority. I could lose everything, but I cannot lose my deen. This is something I cannot compromise and, and leave. وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ And honor the deen of Allah. Honor Allah meaning his deen. وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا And glorify him morning and evening. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ We'll just finish this verse quickly. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُبَايِعُونَكَ إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ Surely those who pledged their allegiance to you, يُبَايِعُونَكَ Surely those Sahaba, referring to the Sahaba, who pledged their bay'ah, their allegiance to you, إِنَّمَا يُبَايِعُونَ اللَّهِ They pledged their allegiance only to Allah. When they were doing bay'ah with you under the tree, we spoke about this in the beginning, bay'at al-ridwan or bay'at al-shajara, when the Prophet ﷺ called the Sahaba, when the rumor spread that Uthman anhu was killed, he called them and he pledged, pledged to me that you will avenge the death of Uthman even if it be till your death. Every Sahabi stood in line and put his hand on the hand of the Prophet ﷺ and pledged their life that we will avenge the death of Uthman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to that bay'ah, saying when you made this bay'ah, 
إن الذين يبايعونك surely those who are pledging their bay'ah allegiance to you or who pledge their allegiance to you they only pledge their allegiance to Allah pledging allegiance to the Rasul was pledging allegiance to Allah يد الله فوق أيديهم Allah's hand was above their hand Allah's hand is from the mutashabihat only Allah knows the true essence of His hand but Allah is saying Allah's hand was above their hands Meaning when they pledge their bay'ah to Rasul, Allah's hand was over them. They should know that they made a promise not only to the Messenger of Allah, but to Allah Himself. And this is why, because they were sincere, Allah revealed His pleasure to these people. That you should know that your allegiance, your pledge was with Allah and His Rasul. فَمَن نَكَثَ فَإِنَّمَا يَنْكُثُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ Thus you should also understand the significance of this pledge. You've made a pledge with Allah, not only the Rasul, but with Allah Himself. Whoever will turn back on his pledge, فَمَنْ نَكَثَ Will break his pledge. Whoever will turn back on his pledge, فَإِنَّمَا يَنْكُثُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ He only goes back against himself. Meaning he only breaks his pledge in harming himself. Allah will not be harmed. Allah's Rasul, Allah's Deen, nothing will happen to it. But the one who goes back on his pledge, he will have to face the consequences of it. Right, so remain firm on your pledge. وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِمَا عَاهَدَ عَلَيْهُ اللَّهِ And whoever will fulfill that which he has pledged upon to Allah, which he has pledged with Allah, فَسَيُؤْتِيهِ أَجْرًا عَظِيمًا Allah will soon give him a, an immense reward for the pledge that he has made and that he has fulfilled. Right, and this is why our recitation of La ilaha illallah is a pledge. Right? to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we will believe Him, we will obey Him. Our, our recitation of Muhammadur Rasulullah is a pledge that we will obey the teachings of the Prophet sallallahu we will follow Him. And likewise, people make pledges, right? It is an obligation to fulfill our pledges to Allah and His Rasul. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all those who fulfill our pledge to Allah and His Rasul. Many people uh, nowadays, there's also this common practice among scholars that they have students and their disciples, they make bay'ah. Right? They put their hand in the hand of the shaykh and they make promises. This is similar to how the sahabas made bay'ah to the Prophet It is a promise they make that we will obey Allah, we will obey His Rasul, we will follow the commands of Allah, we will abstain from sinning. Right? These type of uh, pledges are made. And these are uh, a, a promise that a person makes and he by making this bay'ah, he makes a firm intention that yes, I will do whatever I can to become firm on the deen, to obey Allah and to refrain from his disobedience. Thus it is like a sincere intention that is made through this pledge. So it becomes emphasized. But unfortunately, many people, they are not ready to make this pledge. Right? From the ummah. They're not ready to make this pledge that we will obey Allah in all of His commands. And we will refrain from every act of disobedience. They, we, like, we still haven't made an intention. It's like when a person is asked this, do you intend to refrain from every sin? They hesitate. Like they know there's some sins that, you know, I still, I'm not going to leave them. I still can't do, I still can't pray the five prayers. I still can't, you know, uh, do all the obligations. I'm just doing some, right? So, like, sometimes there's, the intention is not there yet. Right? Let alone attempting. A person will only attempt after he intends, right? And thus, you know, we're, at the, we're in this situation where uh, many uh, uh, of us from the ummah, we haven't even made this pledge yet with Allah and His Rasul. Right? Made this intention that I will become completely obedient to Allah to the best of my ability. I will leave every sin from my life to the best of my ability. After making this pledge, if a person makes a mistake, we do tawbah, we do istighfar, but a sincere intention, right? This is what is lacking, right? Sincere intent. And Allah knows who those who sincerely intend. And He helps those people. He gives them tawfiq. Those who truly want to be obedient, who truly want to give up sin, Allah helps these people. But then those who, you know, I can't leave sin. I can't, I just keep on doing it. Oh, Shaykh, what can I do? Oh, Imam, I can't leave this sin. 
The first question is, have you actually made a sincere intention to leave it? What is a sincere intention? Sincere intention is a person is ready to do everything he needs to do to, to fulfill that, right? We make sincere intentions to go to work. I'm going to go to work tomorrow. Sincere intention. Nothing can stop me from going to work. Because, you know, I have a sincere intention. When I sincerely intend to do something, we see so many obstacles come, but we still remove those obstacles and we go and do what we intend to do. Have we made those intentions in, in relation to the obedience of Allah, refraining from the disobedience of Allah? We will see that we are lacking in our intention. Right? We haven't even made a sincere intention to do complete tawbah from all of our sins. So um, when a person... Um, makes this pledge with Allah and His Rasul, right? That's when Allah and His Rasul, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, gives tawfiq, gives a person to progress, come closer to Allah. Uh, slowly a person is able to leave the disobedience of Allah, leave sin in his life. Because Allah sees in his heart, this person is sincere. He wants to be obedient. And thus Allah opens the doors of guidance. وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا And this Thus we should be ready to struggle to become completely obedient to Allah. And we should be ready to struggle to leave every act of disobedience. When I come to realize that this is, this is something that displeases Allah, I should make a firm intention, Oh Allah, I want to leave this. Help me, assist me. Open the doors for me of guidance so that I can get rid of this from my life. And slowly a person will see slowly. Um, sins will leave this person's life and he will uh, become obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the tawfiq. Allahumma adina al-haqqa haqqan wa rizukna attiba'a wa adina al-baatila baatilan wa rizukna ajtinaba. Allahumma inna du'afa faqawwi fi ridaka du'afana wa khudh ila al-khayri bina wa'asina wa ja'li al-islam muntaha ridaina. Allahumma inna du'afa faqawwina wa inna fuqara farzukna وإن أذي الله فأعزنا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو إسمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر اللهم احفظنا بالإسلام قائمين واحفظنا بالإسلام قاعدين واحفظنا بالإسلام راقدين اللهم لا تشمت بنا الأعداء ولا الحاسدين اللهم لا تشمت بنا الأعداء ولا الحاسدين ربنا تقبل منا ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم ارزقنا حبك وحب رسولك اللهم ارزقنا حبك وحب رسولك اللهم ارزقنا حبك وحب رسولك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين